What's going on everybody? Welcome to today's installment of Mike's Vehicle Vlogs and hey, thank you for tuning in. So I'm a little irritated tonight. <laughs> um, I really uh, wasn't sure if I was going to film this or not, but I'm going to anyway because this probably isn't going to be all that long of a video today. But I'm really upset because I bought a brand new 8mm camcorder. Uh, couple years ago off of eBay brand new in the box and uh, I basically had it as a backup because mosquitoes still uh, I basically had it as a backup because I have a, a lot of old home movies on 8 millimeter in my original 8 millimeter camera which is well over 20 years old at this point doesn't work as well as it used to so I wanted a backup and I was foolish enough to let somebody borrow this camera um, and of course I go to use it for the first time after getting it back which I, I've had it back now for like I don't know, a couple months and I decided to use it for this video to do some outside shots in some vintage 8mm looking footage and it doesn't work so I'm a little upset about that but um, I have a replacement on the way and I will make a video of the unboxing of this because I was actually able to find a brand new Canon model the same exact one that I've had for the 20 some years one finally showed up on eBay it was a little pricey but at least I uh, you know I love the camera it's the one that I've been using for you know the majority of my teenage years and stuff with all my home movies um, so we're gonna we're gonna get that as the replacement brand new still in box and whatnot and uh, I'm looking forward to getting that it should be here in like a week but I'm upset about that I've also got a little bit of a migraine so uh, yeah this is just this is just great but on the bright side it is a beautiful fall evening and we are here at the park with the 2003 Pontiac Grand Am GT you guys see so many videos about this and I'm not 100% sure if a lot of you viewers are still interested in this car or not but I know I am she has been freshly washed um, I washed it uh, it was a couple of days ago actually it might have been last weekend so it's been about a week and today's the first day that she's been out since it's been washed so it still looks gorgeous this side of the car looks actually amazing you know the <laughs> Not a whole lot of errors or flaws on this side of the car when it's cleaned up, you know. So, I mean, it's it's still got some shine and the wheels are still clean. And, yeah, so freshly washed. Probably going to be the last hand washing of the year. Like I said, I do not know uh, if I'll, I don't know if I'll have an opportunity to do it again. But, uh, you know, before winter is actually here. But gorgeous night out here, and uh, we're going to do we're going to do a two-year video because technically I didn't do a two-year video on this thing yet. But uh, about two years ago, at this point in time, as this is being filmed, this car was sitting here in this exact same spot, and it was recently completed under the hood and drivable, and you know it's. Uh, yeah, it's been on the road now for two years. Now, I've actually had it for well over two years now. I got this car at the end of July in 2020. And, you know, it sat in the driveway, you know, for a couple months, few months, while we were working on getting, of course, the intake and head gaskets replaced. And other than that, it really didn't need a whole lot else when I bought it. Um, you know, it needed tires, so we were able to scope out some gently used tires from the junkyard and uh, I can't remember I think at this point that was it but you know there's obviously been other things that we have done to the car in time uh, rewired in stereo replaced the stereo with a nice working head unit monsoon head unit um, you know all four brakes front and back done uh, water pump done uh, we recently just did a starter done so I mean here and there new headlight lens on this side done this side is starting to yellow already 
so we're probably going to end up getting a replacement for that maybe after winter but it's starting to look the way it did when I got it this light was terrible and that one was clear but now we're switching sides apparently I think either way we look at it we're going to have <laughs> we're going to have a yellow headlight they're probably just going to trade on and off if I don't buy them together but I'm not going to do that anyway so yeah two years we did uh you know quite a bit but honestly we didn't have to do as much to this car compared to when I had uh, the 03 as or the 03 the 01 Aztec project car and there was a lot more that needed to be invested into that car so far not bad with this one at all this really hasn't been a car I can complain about for the $750 we paid for it um after all the repairs are done, I, I have not calculated anything for this video because like I said, we're gonna we're actually gonna do a little bit of a twist on this video. Um, but we're probably just over a grand total in repairs to this car since I've been, you know, since I've had it in my possession. And that's not bad considering the car was only 750. And um, I think when uh, I sold the Aztec, Including the price of the Aztec, we were well over three grand on that car. I think it was about thirty-five hundred, if I'm not mistaken, uh, in the cost of the car and repairs. And we've had this one longer. I'm pretty sure at this point, it's definitely been driven longer. So, yeah, it's been a wonderful car. I love it. I'm not planning on giving it up anytime soon, and it just looks so good when it is clean. So yes. Well over two years of ownership, just over two years of it being on the road. And uh, like I said, we were here at this spot two years ago around this time after the car had just been put together. It was probably only on the road for a couple days, you know, and I came out here and I told you guys things that I've learned about the car when, you know, after driving it for the few days and whatnot. And we learned quite a bit about the car. Um, and I told you guys, I started telling you guys what we were going to do, certain things that we were going to replace and, you know, upgrades or, or whatnot, you know. Um, today, <laughs> we're going to talk about, you know, usually with these two-year videos, I'm going to tell you all the itemized things that, yes, we have done to the car. Today, I'm going to shake it up a little bit. I'm going to tell you the things that we didn't do to this car, things that we're either not going to do for one reason or another, or things that we haven't done yet. Um, so, yeah, a little bit different this time. Now, honestly, if I had all of the money in the world, I would totally do everything that I possibly can to bring this car back to its, you know, original pristine condition. But, you know, that's just not feasible, and it's especially not well worth it to a car that is uh, 19 years old at this point and is, you know, um, also just, you know, rust and stuff under the car, you know. I mean, yeah, it's a very well sturdy car at this point in time, but it's not really worth investing a whole lot into getting this fender fixed, replacing the entire front bumper because of the whole and the paint kind of coming off um, just things like that you know it's it's not worth it but if I could if I had all the money in the world then yeah I would totally totally pay somebody to uh, completely restore this thing so that way it has a much longer lifespan than what it's probably got now now I do think this car has a lot of life into it and the stuff for the most part that we haven't done that I'm gonna list off I don't necessarily think has a whole lot uh, to do with the future demise of this car. <laughs> there might be a couple of things here and there that we should probably take care of, but we'll get to that in time, I suppose. So let's start the list. I'll tell you guys what we haven't done to this car that I said I was probably gonna do in the beginning. So obviously the first thing on the list the fender we didn't fix the fender um, my initial thought was to um, maybe try to bend the fender outward but when this car was before my ownership 
you know, it obviously got popped in the front somehow. Um, the headlights pushed back a little bit. Like, everything on this side of the car kind of shifted inward a little bit, I think. And that's why I'm pretty sure the door has forever, and will forever at this point, hit that fender and continue to crease it. Uh, the door... <laughs> <laughs> the door actually opens a little wider now than it did when I when I first got it So I, I probably wedged it a little more so I can you know get in and out easily um, But no, we also learned over the time that we've had the car that this fender is Rotted out on the bottom anyway, so that fender really at that point doesn't have anything to connect it to so even if I pulled it forward It's probably just gonna pull this entire that entire thing outward, you know? So, on the f one of the first things on the list, we did not fix the fender, and we probably never will. Next up, we didn't change the gas pedal. <laughs> I don't know why there's a ridiculous gas pedal in this car. I hate it, I absolutely hate it. But at this point, I really don't know if it's worth going through the trouble of, you know, putting a gas pedal into it from another Grand Am. I don't know if, uh, I've never changed one. I, I'm not sure exactly what it has to entail with that. You know, this is old school throttle linkage, so I'm not sure what it entails. I might still look into it, but you know, at this point in time, I've just kind of grown to live with it. It is not as big a deal, and uh, you know, at this point in time, doesn't really affect any performance of the car. If anything, the, the way that thing looks, it's supposed to give it more performance. When it comes to the driver's door, we never replaced the door lock actuator. I've had this door skin off a few times now, and the lock still works. It still, you know, locks and works perfectly fine. But if you go to actually lock the door, this door doesn't lock. The other one works just fine. This one does not. So this door uh, will continue to be manually locked. Uh, another thing that I did not replace was the red reflector that's missing. Um, it was missing when I got the car and it's still missing now. So uh, maybe, maybe I can still find one of them, but it's not that big a deal to me now. On to the topic of keyless entry. So I have a remote here. It's actually, this is a new case. It's an existing remote. It's the remote from my Alero, actually. And I thought maybe the old Alero remote with a fresh battery will work when programming this. They have the same ID number and everything should work just fine. But uh, apparently it does not. Um, so I even tried using a scan tool to uh, program this actually a few months into driving this car. and. Still didn't get it to work, so the remote itself may just be a piece of crap inside some new casing. But um, I might still think about putting the keyless entry in. Now, honestly, the keyless entry is not really going to make any sense when this door doesn't work, the actuator, the door lock. So um, probably well worth replacing the door lock actuator, maybe, in time. Um, like I said, it's not really that big a deal, but maybe if I do the door like actuator, then buying a brand new remote and programming it to give this thing keyless entry may be something worth it. But until then, I just continue to use the, uh, the lock key for the doors if need be. It's not that big a deal to me anymore. On to the topic of touch-up paint. I think I mentioned at some point that we were going to get some touch-up paint, and I'm still considering it, you know. Um, you know, maybe... Well, I mean, we could try to kind of fix all this, but honestly, you know, it's just going to happen again, so... But like here, you know, we got a tiny bit of rust on this lip here. Um, the, you know, paint up here is kind of cracking from whatever bumped into this car. There's marks there we can probably touch up. Um, I know there's some scratches over here that are... What's with all these mosquitoes? My gosh. Um, yeah, over here. So, scratch there. There's another one here. Those have actually faded over time. I think they were much more noticeable when I first bought the car. So, maybe something with all the washes and, and the, the spray wax that I use. Possibly, 
little by little getting rid of those scratches. Um, that there can use some touch-up paint. So the touch-up paint thing is not out of the question. Uh, some, you know, some of these things on this list are just things that have gone unnoticed for a while and just kind of forgotten about. So um, not necessarily that I didn't want to do anything, but a lot of it's just uh, kind of, you know, kind of gets lost in the back of your mind, I guess. But getting touch-up paint for this, I'm sure, is still possible. And, you know, again, possibly something we'll do in the future. Now, I did mention, uh, I believe a long time ago, about getting a new sun uh, sunroof shade because of the fabric kind of coming off here. And the fact that this thing's actually broken, it's it really doesn't stay down like it should. Um, when we did the sunroof repair and actually had the entire sunroof assembly out, I could have had every opportunity. Why is that still sticking out? I had every opportunity to actually replace the sunroof shade, and I didn't. Um, Honestly, the sunroof shade doesn't do anything when it's closed. It doesn't make noise. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't fly out of the car when the sunroof is open. So, you know what? It's just going to stay. It's not worth the hassle. It's just going to stay the way it is. One other thing that we didn't replace, and so far we don't need to replace, is the EGR valve. Now, the EGR valve was... I guess uh, from what the previous owner told me when I bought this car, she did tell me there was a code in this for the EGR valve. And once I had the car running, um, or home, I forget how it worked out, but yeah, there was a history code for the EGR valve. And um, I think even during the time of uh, the engine teardown, I think I mentioned, you know, we were probably going to buy an EGR valve. But then I was thinking, you know what? Let's not jump to conclusions yet. Let's get this car running to the way that it should be. Let's get this car running back to its um, healthy, un, uh, you know, milked down oil. <laughs> you know, the whole intake leak was, was awful in this car. Let's get this thing back to a good running engine. And let's see how the EGR... Um, acts from there so um, no we haven't had any EGR codes we haven't had any EGR issues the EGR valve itself might have been stuck maybe um, from uh, all the issues going on with the intake leak all the uh, pollution in the engine uh, and the fact that this thing needs a catalytic converter the catalytic converter which is the next thing on the list um, is actually something that was plugged up the entire time that this car was sitting in the driveway. And I didn't even know it because when the car came home, it ran, uh, but we didn't want it to run because of the fact that it was so contaminated with, uh, coolant and the oil. And I didn't even think that this, I didn't even think that this engine had a chance of survival. I thought for sure another engine was going to be put into this thing, but no, uh, She's good. The cat, however, was still plugged up, and we discovered that on the first couple of drives with this car. And uh, honestly, it is catless at this point. It is straight piped, uh, which I think I'm pretty sure I mentioned that in the other vlog. So uh, the cat is gone. It is straight piped. That's why the service engine light is forever on, is because of a catalytic converter inefficiency code, because there's no cat. Um, I was, uh, again, thinking about putting a replacement catalytic converter on it. Uh, the problem is, it's the price of the car, <laughs> you know? Uh, the, you know, we're looking at six, seven hundred dollars, and, um, you know, again, that's money that I didn't have, still don't have all at once to put a catalytic converter on it, and honestly, at this point in time, it's probably not even going to be worth it because of, you know, eventually this car you know i'm hoping to get more time out of it but i'm not going to sink uh like a six or seven hundred dollar part into a car that could end up in the junkyard tomorrow for you know i mean i doubt it's going to end up in the junkyard tomorrow but you know what i mean um it's just i just i don't think it's right plus it sounds good i like the way it sounds without the catalytic converter um here where i live we do not have any kind of emissions checks or anything um but yeah, it's uh, the cat was plugged. The car could not be driven. 
the, the clawed cat would have completely destroyed this engine quickly. Uh, and that's why I just kind of offered to have it, uh, you know, removed and patched up. And that's probably also why this EGR valve, um, maybe that's why it was stuck. Maybe that's why there was a code for that because of all of the back pressure in the exhaust. If the exhaust can't leave the car because of a clogged cat, that might have had something to do with this EGR valve being weird. So again, no issues with the EGR valve. And I'm glad we did not replace that because that just probably would have been a waste of money. In the video that we did with the uh, bumper, we, we took the bumper off to put the fog light in because the entire piece behind the bumper that holds that fog light was broken off probably from this impact here. Well, um, we also need a headlight assembly holder, which you can't see, it's under this piece of plastic here, but it is broken, probably, you know, it's probably why this light is, you know, weird, but it's broken. Um, it is one whole piece again from this side to this side. I was going to buy one the day that we were buying the bumper reinforcer for the fog light. Um, but it was too much money and I haven't done it since. The light stays in its place. It's just a little wonky. And I think honestly, even if a new one gets in there, it's still going to be wonky because of the fact that the fender's messed up. And yeah, there's, there's no change in that. That's going to be like that forever. I was just always concerned that the light was going to fall out or something, but it's in there pretty tight. So we did not do a headlight assembly uh, holder, and we probably uh, will not do so either. The front control arms, I, were t I was told when I had the car looked at um, by a co-worker when I first got it, um, you know, control arms are, you know, kind of looking a little crispy, uh, <laughs> but I don't think there's uh, really any um there hasn't been any play in the wheels i've you know had the car off the ground several times including recently you know um i'll put the car on the the jacks and uh shake the wheels around make sure there's no play in the ball joints or the tie rods um everything uh still appears to be pretty good up front but um you know co-workers said you might want to consider doing control arms uh in the future i may still consider doing the control arms it's definitely not out of the question but as of right now the suspension up front appears to be tight everything appears to drive okay and uh that's just something that i feel you know i'm not going to really sink into but it's like i said not out of the question we will probably get to it uh I don't know, maybe within the next year or so i might actually do them now we can't exactly crawl underneath the car right now, but for some strange reason, uh, back uh, over the last uh, few months, we've had uh, random speckles of transmission fluid coming from the you know the bottom of the the transmission pan, and um, there's no uh, it's not doing it now. It's it completely stopped doing it. I don't know what the deal was. The transmission shifts perfectly fine. But for some reason, we were getting random drips of transmission fluid. And this was, you know, this was happening, you know, it, it, it was just randomly happening over the course of a couple months. And it's it hasn't been doing it for months now. It's very weird. So I don't know what the deal was with that. I was thinking we were going to be changing the transmission pan uh, gasket, uh, but I'm not going to now because now <laughs> it doesn't seem to be doing anything, so we're just going to leave that alone. Leave all well alone. Now we do have to do transmission lines yet, I keep saying that. Them are looking kind of crispy up front here. Um, so we're going to end up losing fluid and I'm going to have to put more fluid in it, which I'm kind of scared to do. but. Um, that's really the only thing I'm messing with as far as transmission uh, fluid goes. Uh, we're just going to replace what comes out of the lines, I guess. And so far, I think the only other thing that I could think of, last but not least, was... Um, uh, when was this? Almost two years ago? No. Was it earlier this year? No, it was, it was two years ago. Almost two years ago, we had a really weird ABS issue. Um, 
the ABS light, the track light, and service vehicle soon light all came on. So I was on my way home from school, and luckily it happened while I was at school, so I was able to bring home the Tech 2 scan tool. We hooked it up when we got home, and there was a, uh, I believe it was a circuit code for this wheel speed sensor, um, which explains probably the service vehicle soon light, because the service vehicle soon light, I think, lights whenever something weird electrically is uh, malfunctioning, like the auto headlights. The bat we had a bad relay, when we bought the car for the auto headlights, it made that service vehicle soon light uh, illuminate. Put a relay in, lights work, and the light went out. But the ABS thing was kind of weird. So yeah, I came up with a circuit code, and I tried to look into it, and the harness, I think, the connector, I think, was coming out of the back of that wheel hub. So once that was done, I don't think there was really any need to replace the anything with the ABS and I haven't had a light on since. I don't know if I ever updated anybody about that but the ABS and traction systems are both fully functional at this time and yeah it's just kind of bizarre that that was happening. So that's what we found with that and that's really all that I've got to say about it. <laughs> I think we're done. I think that's everything that we haven't done that I could think of. I'm gonna go soon, real soon, because there are coyotes out here. And I don't wanna get eaten. But seriously though, this is a beautiful fall night. We're running out of days like this. I'm sure the snow is gonna be here soon. We already had our first actual snowfall um, a couple weeks ago where it actually kinda coated the cars and stuff. It was crazy. So that's why I wanted to get this out of the way. Uh, even though I was greatly upset today. <laughs> That's all right. Anyway, yeah, two years with this thing. I still love this car. I say that all the time. I don't plan on letting it out of my hands for a very long time unless it's something way beyond my control. But we're going to keep this thing going as far as we can. Um, it is almost at 130,000 miles. So we are probably close to putting 12,000 miles total on it. And that's it. It's been an amazing car. And like I said, I said a lot of things on here that we didn't do that I said I was going to do. Uh, doesn't necessarily mean that we're never going to do them. But it's stuff that we didn't do yet. And uh, some of it's very minor. Some of it I might let go. But the things like the control arms and the door lock actuator and, you know, eventually, yeah, we probably will do those just for the heck of it. Especially the control arms. That could be a bad thing if we really let that go, if a problem does exist. But there's no problem now. Everything's still tight. That's all I've got. If you enjoyed this, give a thumbs up, comment, subscribe. I will see you guys next time, as long as I don't get eaten by a coyote. I'll see you guys. Take care. No joke. <laughs> I thought I just saw something moving back behind that weird brick wall there oh no all right worry it's time to go <laughs> oh, something's gonna eat me oh.